You're listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast, where we unpack the meaning of books, passages, and themes from Scripture. Join us each week as Dr. David Klingler walks us through God's Word and teaches the Bible. Each episode has a study guide available in the show notes. This is Teach Me the Bible podcast. Hey everybody, welcome back to Teach Me the Bible podcast. Uh, We are in Hebrews chapter 13 today, which means we're wrapping up the book of Hebrews. Um, And so we've been, for these last 12 chapters, this author has been building his theological argument. Mm -hmm. And as we said, in this last chapter, he gets to his application. We're going to kind of see see what that is today and and, uh, how this book sort of wraps up. And we're hoping that it's making sense to you. Um, but if it's not, don't hesitate to reach out, ask us any questions. We want to help you understand it. That's what we're really about here. So anyways, you want to dive into chapter 13 and, and yeah, see where so, it takes So this is the structure of all uh, epistles. Mm-hmm. Let me make that general statement and then think to see if it's true. <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, th- there, there may be exceptions, uh, you know, I'm thinking of, uh, of, of a couple, but, but for the most part, particularly in Pauline epistles, mm-hmm. um, uh, and uh, you get a lot of theology at the beginning, and then you get to the end of the letter. It says, okay, what do we do with this? Mm-hmm. And so you're not going to get a lot of imperatives uh, until the author explains what it is that you're supposed to believe. Mm-hmm. What's the issue? What needs to be addressed? And how does it need to be addressed? And in light of all this, do yeah. this. And yeah. so so really he sums it up well. Therefore, this is at the end of chapter 12. Mm-hmm. Therefore, since we receive a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us show gratitude by which we may offer to God an acceptable service with fear and awe, reverence and awe. Mm. For our God is a consuming fire. Okay, so if after reading those 12 chapters and mm-hmm. the first 27 verses, <laughs> you don't get to that conclusion, you need to go back. Our God yeah. is a consuming fire. Yeah, he'll, you don't need to worry about the them over there <laughs> who are right. trying to persecute you. You need to worry about the Lord who will discipline you, uh, and you need to offer acceptable service with fear and awe to him because he's a consuming fire. Mm. So what does that look like? What does um, what does acceptable service to the Lord look like? Well, here we go. Let us uh, let the love of the brethren continue. Uh, you want to say, well, how do I serve the Lord? Well, I go, oh, no, that's not it. I'm not going to start a church. You don't have to pastor a church. Basic stuff, right? Uh, let the love of the brethren continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers. Uh, for by the, this, some have entertained angels without knowing it. You know, I'm thinking about uh, about Lot, yeah. right? Uh, remember the prisoners. They're those who are persecuted for the faith, um, who are being in prison. Remember them. Uh, as though in prison with them and those who are ill-treated since you yourselves also are in the body, right? So those who are ill-treated because of Christ, those are, see, it's easy when you see someone persecuted because of Christ just to say, well, you know, it's not my place. It's not, right. no, you jump in there and you stand beside them. Um, let marriage be held in honor among all. Uh, that, there's a way to uh, offer acceptable service to the Lord, right? Mm-hmm. It's through marriage. Uh, you know, let the marriage bed be undefiled for fornicators and adulterers. Uh, God will judge. Uh, let your character be free from the love of money. This is a big one. Uh, so often people um, think that coming to the Lord is going to, you know, bring reward, bring financial, you know, stability, whatever. Um, that's not the case. Yeah. Uh, so let your character be, be free from the love of money, being content with what you have. For he himself has said, I will never desert you, nor will I ever forsake you. Now, how does the Lord not desert or forsake? Well, um, because in the body, Mm -hmm. uh, the body cares for the other parts of the body, right? And so it goes back to, uh, you know, remember the prisoners, remember the ill treated. Let the love of the brethren brethren continue. Don't uh, neglect to show hospitality, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, And so... Um, so this, uh, this uh, love of money, the love of money, the that that that's that goes back to to Luke chapter uh, chapter sixteen, right? Uh, for the Pharisees who were lovers of money mm-hmm. were listening to these things and scoffing at him, mm-hmm. and 
And so he tells him this uh, this uh, parable. That, yeah, this was a big theological issue. Sure. In the yeah. amongst the Jews at that time, that yeah, you know, we're blessed by the Lord because we keep the law, all these things, which is what these guys are tempted to go back to. Yeah. Right. And so yeah. Yeah, and and so so much of what drives, unfortunately, drives so much of what happens in the church is is finances, and most mm. of if you think about it, most of what the church is called to do mm. requires no money. It doesn't cost any money for people to gather. It doesn't cost money to care for one another. It doesn't cost money to show love for the brethren. It doesn't show, uh, cost money to show hospitality. It doesn't cost money to remember prisoners. It doesn't cost money to hmm. hold marriage in honor. None of these things cost money, right? The, the, the body of Christ ought to operate that way. And, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, so that we confidently say this, verse 6, the Lord is my helper, I shall not fear. What? can man do to me, Mm -hmm. right? Now, this goes back to your theology, Mm -hmm. which, uh, you know, which says, I'm going to serve the Lord. And I'm thinking here of, uh, you know, for, you know, Peter's argument in first Peter, you know, um, you know, that that if if it's the Lord's desire that you should suffer, so be it, Mm -hmm. right? Um, But, um, you know, so, so so much of this stuff we get we get astray. So fear yeah. the Lord, mm-hmm. keep His commands. Right? Don't fear man, right? Yeah, and don't yeah, fear man, which is kind of sums up a lot of this book. But that's the whole. Right? That's, They're fearing man. They's not fearing the Lord. Yeah, they got that mixed that, up. That yeah. sums up most of our Christian yeah. walk. Yeah, fair point. Uh, if if you fear the Lord and don't fear man, and you love the Lord and don't love the things of the world, I'd say you're like 98% of the way <laughs> down the sanctification, you know, walking faithfully trail. Yeah. Uh, uh, 13.7, remember those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you, and consider the result of their conduct. Imitate their faith. Paul says this all the time. Mm-hmm. Follow me as I follow Christ, right? Uh, you know, and boy, we could go through all the list of Paul's letters and mm-hmm. and you know, to the Corinthians, I mean, the Corinthians are taking issue with Paul. Why are you doing this? And why aren't you doing that? And, and, and his repeated answer is I, everything I do is to build up the body of Christ. Um, I deserve to get paid. I don't get paid, uh, so that I can offer the gospel f- uh, free of charge so that you would never think mm-hmm. that I'm doing it for the money. Mm-hmm. Uh, this which is, they do. which they do, right? <laughs> right? Um, why aren't you married? Uh, well, because I can, so I can fully devote myself to the, uh, to the, uh, you know, to the Lord and to his church. And, and and so everything we do in our motivation ought to be in service to the to Lord. The, yeah. um, and if it's, um, and, you know, it, it ought to cost you. It, it, it's, it's going to cost you, right? So uh, remember those who led you, who spoke the word to you, imitate their conduct, Paul. Uh, imitate their faith. Uh, their, that's that's Paul's words. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and, uh, uh, and yes, even f- forever. So do not be carried away by varied and strange teachings. This is why you need to remember those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you. Mm-hmm. And of course, this is, you know, very early in the church. And, and of course, church, uh, you know, there's heresies that are always coming into the church. So remember the, the, the teaching of the apostles and prophets. For it is good for the heart to be strengthened by grace, not by foods, through which those uh, who um, were thus occupied were not benefited. In other words, this whole, why is he talking about uh, grace and not foods? Because, you know, this whole law keeping, you know, don't mm-hmm. eat, don't touch, you know, mm-hmm. these type of things was common in, in Judaism. Mm-hmm. Um, so we have an altar uh, from which those who serve the tabern- tabernacle have no right to eat. For the bodies of those animals whose blood is brought into the holy place uh, by the high priest and offered as a sin offering are burned outside the camp. Therefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify people through his blood, suffered outside the gate. Um, You know, Christ was crucified outside the gate of the city. Hence, let us go out to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. Well, well, what's it, you know, so, Mm -hmm. you know, Israel is rebelling against the Lord. They rejected the Lord, rejected the rock of his, uh, his Messiah, his Christ. And they're persecuting those who uh, go outside the camp. Christ was expelled from, you know, from the, you know, from the, the group from right. Israel, right. was crucified outside the city. Mm-hmm. He said, you think it's going to be any different for you? Um, again, reminded of Peter's argument, you know, 
um, you were called for this, uh, you know, for this purpose, since Christ also suffered you for you, leaving you an example to follow in his steps. And mm-hmm. so it's the same thing, right? They rejected uh, you. They're going uh, rejected me. They're going to reject you. Jesus says this in uh, mm-hmm. uh, in uh, in the Gospel of John, Upper Discourse. They hated me. They hated, hated you, right. but fear not. Right. right. But access to the Father is through is through the Son. The Son, and not so if, through the Jews. Right. In the, that sense, that yeah. they're claiming that it's through them. And so the, the only access to the yeah. Father is to go outside the camp yeah. where Jesus is. That's no, brilliant. you have to go <laughs> uh, follow Jesus. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, hence, uh, we are, uh, let us go to him outside the camp, bearing his reproach, identifying with him, identifying with his rejection. For we do not speak. Uh, for, for I'm sorry. For for here, uh, we do not have a lasting city, but we are seeking the city which is to come, the the uh, the new Jerusalem, right, mm-hmm. the perfect Jerusalem. So uh, through him, then let us continually offer up sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of the lips, and give thanks to his name. And do not n- neglect doing good and sharing, for with such sacrifices God is pleased. Uh, this goes back to uh, uh, you know this this um, offering sacrifice. He, he's he's explaining what is an acceptable service with reverence and all. What does that look like? Uh, and so, you know, it, it looks like what he's been explaining. You're gonna have to be rejected. You're gonna go outside the camp. You're not you you're not to love money. You're not to fear uh, what men fear. All of it. Uh, you're to obey your leaders and submit to them. Boy, there's one that uh, that uh, we need to pay attention to. Hmm. Um, the only time that we ever talk about o- obedience and submission in the church, it seems, is when we're trying to get those wives in line, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm saying, no, o- obey and submit go together. Yeah. They always go together. Hmm. Um, children, obey. Your father, uh, oh, submit to your fathers. Uh, you know, you got masters, so you got three, um, you know, three relationships that God's revealed Himself in the Old Testament. It's fathers, sons, masters, servants, and husbands and wives. And mm-hmm. and in all three of those, there is a uh, a leader, mm-hmm. uh, you know, a role where the leader is to sacrificially de- lay down his life and love and care for those under his stead. Uh, and the the one who is to obey and submit, mm-hmm. and, and and those go together, mm-hmm. right? Obey and submit. So obey your leaders and submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as those who will give an account, right? Wow. So you know we, we ought to, you know, it seems to me that what he's saying here is, you know, you're going to stand there in front of the Lord, uh, and uh, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to stand in front of the Lord. And he says, well, okay, right, well, Klingler, explain yourself. That's not how it works. It, you know, the pastor is going to stand in front of the Lord and said, hey. Explain what Klingler's doing, mm-hmm. right? And, and the pastor's <laughs> going to look over and say, I have no idea, right? That's what we've all been trying to figure out this whole time. Yeah. No. Oh, but and th- why they, are all those guys going over and going back to the sacrificial yeah. system? Yeah. You're, you're accountable. Yes. Yeah. And so obey your leaders, submit to them, for they keep watch over your souls as yeah. those who will give an account. Wow. So, so when they give an account for you, we want that, you know, you want that to go well. So let them do this with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. Mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's good. Uh, and, then, uh, and then pray for us. You know, this is the, the Paul's group. For, for we are, sure, now we don't know who wrote this, uh, this letter, and there's all kinds of speculation about who, who uh, did write this letter. Um, but um, we, we, we know it's not Timothy, mm. Because in verse, tw- well, that'd be weird if he said in verse twenty-three, <laughs> take notice that our brother Timothy, Timothy has been released. If he's writing it, that'd be that'd be a weird thing. <laughs> take notice that your brother, Tim- you know, he's speaking in the third. Weirder person. things have been yeah. written. I'm yeah, sure, yeah, but- yeah, maybe so. But 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 I think it's safe to say it's not Timothy. Yeah. Uh, but Timothy's in the Paul group, so it's somebody in that Paul group, yeah. and there's a lot of Pauline theology here. So uh, back to verse eighteen, thirteen, eighteen. Pray for us. For we are sure that we have a good conscience, desiring to conduct ourselves honorably in all things. And I I urge you all the more to do this, that I may be restored to you sooner. That's an interesting Mm -hmm. uh, phrase. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now the God of peace, uh, who brought up from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, even Jesus our Lord. That's powerful language if you read this this letter. Mm -hmm. Uh, Equip you in every good thing to do his will. Well, what's to do his will? Um, you know, to, to, to uh, working uh, in us that uh, which is pleasing in his sight, that through Christ Jesus, uh, whom be glory forever and ever. 
uh, what's pleasing as well. It's acceptable service. It's all of chapter 13. That for the, for the author is, is what uh, we ought to be doing, what they ought to be doing. And I'd say it's all just as applicable for us today. Mm-hmm. But I urge you, brethren, bear with this word of exhortation, for I have written to you briefly. That's briefly. That's a long <laughs> briefly. That's 13 chapters of it's briefly. A detailed briefly. Yeah, deta- yeah. <laughs> uh, take notice that our brother Tim- Timothy has been released, uh, with whom if he comes soon, I, uh, I shall see you. Um, greet all of your leaders and all the saints. Those from Italy greet you. Grace be with you all. Uh, and so the end of the of the book. And you start to see a lot of uh, you know this Pauline theology just coming through. So if it's not Paul writing it, it's certainly someone who's right there with Paul yeah. and has walked the trail with Paul for a long mm-hmm. time and has adopted this theology. Uh, because you see all of these same these same things. Everything about our lives in the church ought yeah. to be for the building up of the body yeah. of Christ. Yeah. Um, you know, and and so So it seems to me that chapter 13 then is you know, he's he's telling them to endure, right? And to not go back, to press forward. And chapter 13 is how they're going to he wants them to do that. And uh would you say that's the same way that we endure today? Uh yeah. In what ways does that look different? Well, I think that uh, the the endure you know endurance always looks different given the circumstance, right? Mm-hmm. But for them, you know, if we <clears throat> look at kind of what what the uh, you know the Jewish believer would have been going through, mm-hmm. you know, he's going through persecution, he's going mm-hmm. through mm-hmm. being expelled maybe from the synagogue, um, you know, and that would that would uh, you know give rise to the do not uh, forsake the gathering of the brethren, mm-hmm. right? So they kick you out of synagogue. It means you don't stop gathering. You 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 know go gather somewhere else, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's what ecclesia means. That's what the word church means. It means yeah. gathering. And so you can, you know, you know the 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 body of Christ. What you need to have church. You don't need a building. You don't need a budget. You don't need, you know, multi you know media laser light show. You don't need, you know, I mean, all those things are nice and all those things are helpful. Here's what you have to have. Uh, you have to have. Uh, someone to teach the word. You have mm-hmm. to have uh, the mm-hmm. people and you have to, you know, uh, partake in the, yeah, in the sacraments and the, yeah. in the commands right. uh, that, that are from the Lord. And, yeah. and if you can do that, you can do church. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we've made this pretty complicated, but, but for them, mm-hmm. uh, endurance looked different. I'd mm-hmm. say for us today, um, you know, I go back to this, remember, those who led you, who spoke the word of God to you mm. and consider the result of their conduct, imitate their faith. I don't know that I'd be real excited about saying that today <laughs> because there's so much false teaching mm-hmm. out there. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we, we need to get back to, you know, teaching the ones for all faith delivered to the saints. The, the, the gospel has been watered yeah. down. Yeah. Uh, it's um, become a means of profit for some and, uh, and, um, you know, and and so, at least for me, I, mm-hmm. I try to keep a very clear conscience about motivation, and that's not easy mm-hmm. to do, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, but but how do you endure walking faithfully in the midst of a world uh, that is always trying to entice, always yeah. trying to lead astray? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and uh, you know, so that's a yeah, that's, that's a challenge. <clears throat> yeah, I was thinking, you know, these guys kind of give them a hard time, right? Because you've not yet resisted to the point of shedding blood, but they still have this threat of persecution. <laughs> we got people in modern day church that are jumping ship and there's not even threat of persecution. You know, yeah, and, they, they sign up. Yeah. They, they, they ha- you know, what they've signed up for and what they've been told is that come to Jesus and all your problems go away. Yeah. And they come to Jesus and Same their problems theology. don't go away. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and, uh, and then they, they, you know, they, Dwarf. they jump ship. Right. And, Right, right. Yeah. And so so this is going to take endurance, yeah. perseverance, and, yeah. and it's going to take suffering. And, and, and all of life does. Mm-hmm. Whether you're a believer or not, you're going down the trail of suffering and and uh, trials and tribulations and then ultimately mm-hmm. uh, death. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and so do you have an answer for that? Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, for, the, for the author of Hebrews, the answer is not reject Christ, go back to the Old Testament partials yeah. that can't deliver from any of those things. Yeah. All of those things, we're looking forward to the one yeah. who could deliver from yeah. those things and will deliver in the future. Mm-hmm. So that um, that all of those uh, examples of Old Testament faith never received what was promised. And mm-hmm. we haven't yet either mm-hmm. 
uh, and so let's endure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, endure because Christ is the originator, author, and completer, perfecter of the faith. And so let's run the race as he ran it. Mm -hmm. And so... So pretty straightforward uh, book. Always live for something yeah. and not for nothing. That, yeah, well said. Well said. Probably. I'm pretty, in sure, there. I'm pretty yep. sure you've said that as a boy. <laughs> Sounds good. I'm gonna yeah. if I didn't, then I'm gonna start claiming it. That's yeah, good. so that's good. Awesome. Well, hey, thank you all so much for joining us these last 13, 14 weeks. Uh, we've really enjoyed well, however many weeks it's been. Yeah. I don't even know at this point, but uh, I know we've enjoyed kind of going through this book, and we hope that it's making sense to you, uh, and then you have a newfound appreciation for. Uh, for the book of Hebrews and for all of the Bible. This this went through a lot of of Bible story in just this one book. And so anyways, don't hesitate, as we've said before, to reach out, ask us questions uh, through the website or our emails. Uh, we would love to help continue to help you understand uh, the word of God. And so uh, we will see you next time uh, for the next book. Thanks for listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast. Our desire is to use the power of God's Word to change lives. For more information, download our app. Join us next week for another episode of Teach Me the Bible.